obviously I'm Ruth Morrill, and you can see I'm and it's tactility factory. But I work part-time in tactility factory. I'm seconded in a part-time arrangement. And the other part of the partnership is uh, Trish Belford. Um, and Trish, I'm an architect, obviously, and Trish is a textile designer. So we, we, combined, we combine the skills of Trish into my discipline. So, and, and we do that for a number of reasons. We, we've been doing it for six years. We've been working together for six years, which is an awful long time. Um, and the technology has taken a long time to develop. I mean, neither Trish nor I come out of a background of thinking about patented technology, you know, and IP and all of those things. That's not what our background is. But the partnership has led us in that direction. And that's one of the interesting things about partnership is that it takes you into zones you would never anticipate going into. Trish has been, this is kind of her background, and these are textiles that she would have done. So you can see that even though it's a print background, actually, the textiles are very tactile, and that was for me the clue, and that's the reason I wanted to work with her, because when we sat and talked and she showed me the textiles that she'd been involved in, I looked at this stuff, and I know that behind that wonderful surface that you really engage with is loads of hardcore technology, both chemical and mechanical, and as an architect, we kind of think that technology is everything, it's the be all and end all, and sometimes the end result of what we do Whereas she takes technology and turns it into something that you really love, you really want to engage in. And for me, that's smart as hell. For me, that was, you know, this is what we need in architecture. We need this kind of thinking to come into the built environment. We also work with other people, a whole range of people. This is Morris. Morris is a precast expert in concrete. We work very, very um, closely with graphic designers. Because from the beginning, telling the story of what we want to do has been a difficult one. Because it's so innovative, we've really had to work with young... Uh, there's one graphic designer in particular we've worked with, and we have fed his business as much as he's fed ours. So that, that's been a fantastic relationship. So there are multiple kind of relationships within what we do. And as you can see, it's fairly widespread across a whole range of industries. And we've gone through a whole lot of experimental phases, some of which have worked, some of which haven't. That's why it's taken so long. And we keep going, we do exhibitions. One of the things that we do, and it's very useful for us, is that even though it's been, we've been slow in getting commissions, we've done exhibitions and we've tried to get into press. And again, that, that's kind of linked into getting out there and networking and all of those things. That we very much believe, even if we're not going to get a commission, we're going to complete a piece of work and we're going to put it out there so people can see. And to a certain extent, that's the thing that's really driven the technology. If we didn't have those deadlines, we wouldn't have resolved the issues that we've had to resolve. One of the things I do in the other part of my life is I teach design. I teach design to hosts of architecture students. And part of teaching design is teaching creativity and innovation. Like how do you craft that? Is that accidental? Is that just something that pops out of the air? Or is there a strategy to becoming, coming up with more creative and innovative solutions? And one of the strategies that we talk about with them, and I'm doing teaching with first year at the moment, is cross-programming. It's where, it, certainly within architectural terms, it's where you would take one use and try and cross-program it with something that is almost in opposition to it. So you might want to put uh, housing for the elderly with a toddler's group. You know, so, and because a lot of creative people understand that conflict is often the source of a great creative response. So what I'm saying is that, to a certain extent, Trish and I, I'm not saying we're in conflict, but we're very different. We have very different practices, very different ways of doing things. We come out of different sources, but when we come together, that interconnection, that cross-programming of, of two individuals, and as I say, there are multiple individ individuals, releases a lot, lot more than you would ever expect. That's why when I go places, I'm less interested in talking to architects. Sometimes I have to. Yeah. Everybody has to talk to an architect at least once, right? But I will try and meet people who from uh, from a whole range of backgrounds, because it just fills me full of other information that I can then process and bring into my own work. And I, I think that's really key. As I say, Trish and I have very different motivations. Trish is very different. I'm quite a strong feminist. A lot of what I do is grounded in feminist theory. It's also grounded in a critique of the built environment, and I have a theoretical position. Trish doesn't care two hoots about those things. She doesn't in any way care about those things. 
She cares about being involved in the making process, so her and I have entirely different motivations. And one of the things I will always do, because I work in a lot of collaborative projects in other aspects of my life, is that the a very first thing is really ask, what do you want to get out of this? You know, and like I've done community pro projects, and I may have an intellectual interest in working with them, but they have other interests. And it's really important that the personal motivation comes to the table and that we make sure that we deliver to each motivation. So my final message is give it a go. <laughs> gotta, gotta get stuck in, get, you know, really, I mean, it's fantastic. I have to say it's been, you know, I really resonated with the, the motivational speaker in pink earlier on. You know, I think Trish and I, um, have definitely had uh, a very rich life experience before we met each other and I think the fact that we have kind of come together has been life changing for me and it definitely has resulted in some of the best work I've ever done. I'm very proud of it. Um, working with others from another end of the spectrum definitely has the release to, you know, potential to release innovative outcomes. Um, a final thing, and it, it may be, I mean I wrote no politics, just mutual respect. One of the things if you work across different disciplines is that you don't bring your own political kind of savviness because you don't really know the other discipline. So I, to a certain extent, I'm probably a really lousy judge of how good a textile designer Trish is. You see that suspension of judgment of the other person's ability to do something. It's really important when you make it a partnership with people. You have to suspend judgment at certain times. You have to just give them the space. And, and I think because I come from an institution or higher education institutions which are so laden with politics, you know, big brains trying to find the best way to undermine the simplest idea as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, you know, I think to be in a space where you can just mutually respect each other across that kind of divide is really important.